So how does this $60 lens compare to this $300 lens? So one of these pictures was taken with this $63 lens that you can buy on Amazon and the other picture was taken by this lens that you can buy for about $290 on Amazon. A few months ago I was on Amazon just kind of perusing lenses and I came across this one for about $60. Uh, it's a manual focus lens uh, from the brand Miko Plus, um, some Chinese no-name whatever brand. And I was mostly just curious, how good could a $60 lens actually be? So right now we are going to find out. So in today's video, I am going to show some photos I took with this Miko Plus lens and compare it to some pictures I took with this Sigma lens. I tried to take the exact same photo with basically the same settings so I could really compare and contrast just to see how this really cheap lens compared to this normal priced lens, I guess. I, I'm also going to talk about my experience with this Miko Plus lens and kind of what I think about it. So this lens is a 25 mil lens with f1.8, which is pretty good considering it's a $63 lens. Again, Miko Plus, don't really recognize the name, just some Chinese brand, I guess. It's got a whopping two reviews on Amazon, both five stars. So you know it's gotta be good. The, the build quality is actually pretty impressive. Like I think other than this lens cover, there's really not any plastic. The whole thing is metal. It's uh, very smooth to adjust. The, the lens, it feels really good. It, it's a pretty small lens, but um, just looking at it, it seems quite nice. So the closest lens to 25 mil that I have that I can compare it with is this Sigma 30 mil lens. Uh, this is a pretty popular lens. This lens costs just under $300. It's Amazon choice. Woo. I already know that this is a good lens, so this is a pretty good lens to compare, even though it's 30 mil comparing to 25, you know, I know it's not really apples to apples. So let's have a look at some comparison photos. So in this first comparison image, um, this is in Yellowstone, some geyser hot springs, wh whatever you call that. Uh, this will be f16, so I'm not letting in a lot of light to the lens. So this is the Miko Plus, then over here, you can see the Sigma lens, so just going back and forth. So the most noticeable difference is that the Sigma lens seems to be overall just a bit brighter. If you look at the exposure time uh, over here, you can see that the exposure time is actually a little bit longer uh, than the Miko Plus lens. So this is what my camera decided to do. I should have done everything with manual settings, but I didn't think about it at the time, but uh, that's probably one of the reasons why is this has a longer exposure time so everything seems just a bit brighter. One thing that I noticed with this uh, Miko Plus image is that the shadows and highlights seem to be a little bit more dynamic than with this Sigma lens, which I actually quite like. And you know, th this might actually be related to the exposure time, maybe because this had a smaller exposure time but that's actually pretty cool. So this next image, these are just some wheat fields in Idaho. This was taken with the Miko Plus lens and then basically the same image, but taken with the Sigma lens. So on the Miko Plus lens, this is F1.8. On the Sigma, it's F1.7. Sigma actually goes down to F1.4, but I tried to set it with settings as close as possible. But the image quality to me looks pretty comparable. Let's go ahead and let's zoom in to like 400%. Uh, so you can look, this is the Miko Plus lens, you know, zoomed in. Obviously that's pretty blurry, it's far distance. But have a look at this. Um, here with the Sigma lens, 
we'll zoom in all the way looks looks about the same as far as image quality goes and sharpness and focus pretty pretty happy with the Miko plus lens um, I thought it did a good job with this I think that's a pretty nice looking photo this is unedited this is unedited so this is just what is coming out of the camera so next image, this is an LDS temple in Rexburg, Idaho. Um, so here's the Miko Plus lens. Here's the Sigma lens. Again, these are looking really quite similar. So let's go ahead and do a zoom again. This is the Miko Plus with F1.8. Let's just kind of zoom into the building spire so you can see kind of the details here. So. So take a look at this. Um, not not too bad for being zoomed in 400 percent. Is that 400? Yeah, that's zoomed in 100, 400. Not too bad. Okay, let's look at the sigma. Let's do the same thing. We'll zoom in at 400. Okay. So one thing you might notice here. Is right here on the side you're getting some of those uh, chromatic aberrations um, not I didn't see that with uh, the Miko plus um, this is definitely something you don't really necessarily want uh, not really noticeable when you're just zoomed in at 100% but when you zoom in at 400% you notice it uh, but again you know other than kind of being different millimeter lenses, it looks really pretty similar. That's cool. And so for this last image, these are the Grand Tetons. We stayed at a nice Airbnb with this great view. So let's look first, Miko Plus, this is F16. So again, it's not letting in a lot of light. So let's zoom in to 400. Um, so here's the mountains. It's not looking, I mean, this is really far into the distance. It's not looking super focused. Um, here's some chromatic aberrations. This is the Miko Plus with F16. So this is a bit red. So on the F1.8, we weren't seeing this on F16. We are seeing this, so that's kind of interesting. Let's zoom out. So there's a look. Then we'll switch to the Sigma. This is F16, again, not letting in a lot of light. Uh, we'll go 400%. Okay, wow, so these mountains, uh, that looks that looks better. That looks definitely more clear. Uh, right here, this is definitely a, an advantage of having autofocus. Let's go over and... Uh, you know, I see a hint of maybe yellow. I don't know if that's just the landscape or some more chromatic aberrations here, but that, that does not look not look too bad. So between the Miko Plus and the Sigma, you know, when you're zoomed out like this, not really noticing a big difference, I would say the Miko Plus again, I feel like it has more dynamic highlights and shadows, which I really like. But the, the overall quality on the Sigma is uh, definitely better. Okay, so now we're looking at the Miko Plus F1.8. Here's the image. Let's zoom 100% or 400%, sorry. Uh, peaks look maybe a little bit better than they did at F16. And... still seeing a bit of that yellow so and again I mean that could just be the Sun then if we go to the Sigma okay that looks pretty good we'll zoom into 400 yeah yep peaks peaks are looking more crisp that looks good come over here ooh and here you're getting again the blue chromatic aberration so that's that's kind of interesting so you know zoomed out th th there are differences but it's kind of hard for me to make out maybe you can do a better job than me so a few things I learned doing that walkthrough for one the Miko plus lens is actually rather impressive to me I think the image quality 
is fairly comparable to the Sigma. I mean, they're not the same. Sigma, you usually get slightly more in focus, but overall, um, I'm pretty impressed. Another thing of note is I realized my testing is flawed because I didn't do everything in manual. So you'll see some of these exposure times are not going to be identical. So that is going to throw some of this testing off and these images would look slightly different if I had set things manual. Sorry about that, my bad. I would say the main advantage of the Sigma lens is just that it everything comes in much better focus, a little bit more tack sharp. That's a very important thing. That's what your automatic focus is going to give you. That That is a pretty big deal. One other thing I noticed is that Sigma seemed to do better than the Miko Plus when you had f16 or when you were letting in less light but the Miko Plus when compared to the Sigma at f18 seemed to do a good job of not having as much chromatic aberrations as the Sigma did so that's actually one nice thing about the Miko Plus that I think it has a leg up on the Sigma at least in these photos that I took could be just the way the lighting was. I'd have to do some more tests to know for sure. One other thing I would like to talk about is I was able to actually do some night photography while I was up there. I have always had terrible results with night photography, but one thing I will say with the Miko Plus lens is that having a lens that is manual focus is so much easier for night photography and being able to go to f1.8, I was able to get some pretty decent shots. You know, obviously this is something I still need to work on, but here's some images. These are just straight up images, no editing or anything. I was really happy with the kind of detail you could get. You can see, you know, the exposure time, 20 seconds. You're already seeing some light trails, but on the Sigma camera, with the Sigma camera, I took one image and here it is. I was pretty happy with it. Like this is pretty good. And then I took another one with basically the same exact settings and boom, it's really blurry. Um, you know, obviously that's because I still had it on automatic mode and I know on my camera, I can set it to manual mode, but it was so dark and I forgot how to do it. I couldn't see it. I just kind of gave up, didn't care. That's one really nice thing about the Miko Plus lens is that it's just really easy to do at night. Everything's manual. You can feel the lens. You can focus it that way. I had a lot of fun doing that. So now that you've seen a couple comparison photos, let me tell you just some of my general thoughts on this really cheap $60 lens. I've actually been surprised that I've enjoyed it as much as I have. Again, it is manual, so it's not as easy to take photos with it. That being said, I found because it is a manual focus lens, it kind of forced me to be more intentional with the photos I took. I knew before taking a picture, I was gonna have to take a little bit more work getting it in focus and setting up the camera. So I didn't just go taking pictures here and there, but I really wanted to capture the image and make sure it was going to be a good image. Honestly, I feel like using this has kind of made me a better photographer. I am not at all a good photographer. I'm not professional, it's just a hobby, but I learned a little bit more about how lenses work because I have to do everything manually. So I learned a little bit more about aperture, I understand a little bit better how aperture lets in the light, you know, going to f1.8 lets in a lot of light, f16 doesn't let in as much, how that lighting kind of affects photos. I didn't really think about that before. Now that I've used this, I feel like I do have a better understanding. Really, th there's no question to me, this is just a better lens. I, I think for one, just the fact that it's automatic, it makes it a better lens. There is such an advantage of having an automatic lens. When you want to go out and take pictures, especially action pictures, you just have to have automatic to get that nice tack focus image. There was an instance where I was trying to take pictures of my son with this Miko Plus lens. He was playing with a ball. And really only about half of the images I took were actually in focus. And the ones that were in focus would probably be in much better focus 
if I was using an automatic focus lens such as this Sigma lens. That being said, this lens is about $230 cheaper than this and the image quality difference I was seeing between these two lenses did not seem that significant. Sure, I think the Sigma lens does take better images, but at a glance, and especially just viewing on a computer screen and not being zoomed in at all, it's really hard to tell between these two lenses. I would absolutely recommend this Miko Plus lens for anyone who's interested in like landscape photography or night photography something where you're not taking an image of a moving subject or something like that, this is actually really good for. It can take really great images and if you're trying to go for that wide angle look and you just want to have a lens that can do that and looking for something cheap, this is really a good option. This might also be okay for portraits, photography, especially if your subject is an adult and you can tell them to stay still and they do that. If you're trying to do action shots or take pictures of kids it's really not going to work it's just too much work being a manual focus lens to get everything in focus when your subject is moving around so if you're interested in trying this out and i definitely recommend it if you have a sony camera i have a link posted in the description below check it out on amazon maybe the price will have changed since i post this video but I've really been happy with this lens. Go check it out.